the music industry, people chase their dreams in order to showcase their artistry and also gain a lot of wealth. But what happens when it comes with the trade-off of sacrificing your mental health? Let's discuss. What's up y'all, it's your boy Beasley here. Hope you all are staying cool, comment collected out there. So, I'm sorry that I've been away. Um, this weekend, the drinks came out to play and I actually caught alcohol poisoning, y'all, on Saturday. Like, I was in this house all Saturday. It was really, really bad, but I'm alive and well. And anyway, I want to come at you guys with a video on the mental health within the music industry or lack thereof. Because to me, in 2020, it was exposed that a lot of these artists don't have it like that. And also with the recent outburst of Doja Cat and Cardi B, it is plain to see that the music industry is just not the place to be. So starting off with social media, social media has really showcased the sheer amount of work that these artists have to do in order to entertain you you know they have to be part-time influencers while being full-time artists you know showcasing their artistry but also like showcasing like their personality to their fans back in the 90s and the 2000s we could say that the artists had it a little bit easier because they didn't have to deal with social media but it's the sheer fact that there was like a wall that was pulled over our eyes like we didn't understand the sheer amount of work that these artists had to do back then you know the touring the scheduling the appearances the um, dance practice, vocal training, all that jazz. Like we didn't know what the sheer amount of work that a Britney Spears or a Beyonce had to go through. And now that we were able to see that, we have a vision over just how these artists are constantly overworked, y'all. Like they do not get a chance to even breathe. Like once they're done hopping up the stage, they gotta hop on social media, to talk to you guys, to um, kick it with you guys, say what's up, let you know that they're doing well, alive and well, but they also had to sell, 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 sell a product to you as well. Like imagine coming home from like an 8 to 10 hour shift and then hopping on a camera to talk to you fans. I mean, I do that already. <laughs> But imagine doing that like every single day on a weekly basis. Now they will say that like, you know, you could take a break. You could take a break from social media. But when you're a celebrity and a high standing artist, a highly sought after artist, there's no breaks anymore. There's no breaks at all. You don't get any time off or any rest. And all of that hard work and sleepless nights also translates to paying off the debt. Because once these artists are signed, they are in debt. Like we've all heard like from all the way back in the day from TLC to Tony Braxton. Like once these artists like get on, they have to make sure that they get on so that they can get off. I'll never forget when Tony Braxton had that interview and also in her documentary when she talked about how she was blindsided because, you know, she was on a high in the industry. Like, she was doing the damn thing. Like, her music was everywhere. She was at the top of the charts. But when it all came down to the end of the day and she saw how much money that she owed back to the label, Homegirl was broke. So broke to a point where she had to file for bankruptcy and TLC had to do the same thing as well because there wasn't even enough money to split across the three. We are the biggest selling female group ever. Um, 10 million albums worldwide. We have worked very hard. We have been in this business for five years and we are broke as broke can be. And we're not like trying to be a sad story. If that was the case, we would have been on everybody's talk show talking about how broke we are. We haven't done that. I know it's hard to believe because we've sold so many albums, but it is possible. That's the deal here. So, and we're not happy at all, but for real tonight, this is all we wanted. We wanted to win a Grammy, at least one, and we won two. And that proves that we are the jam. You know what's crazy? We noticed that the music industry has a lot of bad contracts throughout the years, but yet we continue to repeat the same cycle and repeat the same cycle because, in my opinion, I've said this before, the music industry is like a multi-level marketing scheme. Like, you know, the artists get on and they get put on in a bad contract and, you know, in order for them to get some more money to, like, flow in so they can pay off their debt, they bring in other artists underneath them when they start their own label. Even though they haven't even been in the game for that long, a lot of these newer artists start 
start their own label and sign other lesser known artists underneath them and put them in bad contracts so they can get money that trickles up to them and then trickles back up to the people that they owe the debt to. And after all these countless examples throughout history, people continue to make the same bad decisions due to either being desperate or just being hungry for fame or hungry to like really showcase their artistry and tired of like working hard at night with no one funding their lifestyle, funding their dream. At the end of the day, they all get a rude awakening. They all get a rude awakening because if their music flops and nothing pops, they owe that money back plus interest. And then, you know, a lot of rappers go out and get chains too. You know, there's been like, I've seen rappers um, like Solo Lucci from Love and Hip Hop, for example, would go out and get jewelry once he got his advance, not realizing that that advance is an advance. It just sucks that in the music industry you have to choose between, you know, being in a bad contract in order for you to get your artistry out there and get recognition or going independent in the hopes that you will pop one day. Also, while being an artist, besides just worrying about debt, you also have to do a lot of ass kissing, a lot of networking, and a lot of people pleasing. You know, back in the day, you know, when artists used to collaborate with each other, it used to be like a cherry on top type of thing. But now these days, artists actually do that in order to like grow and also survive. The main thing in the game today is if you're an artist kind of just starting out you're gonna look for other artists that are a little bit um, more known than you to collaborate with so you can get your name out there and um, you continue to like work your way up and collaborate with the people that are at the top hopefully if they give you the time of the day it's like clout chasing like how much clout can you get like how big of an artist can you become so that you know you can climb your way to the top and then other people will try to climb their way to the top off of you. But that's exactly what you have to do. These days, these artists have to collaborate with each other. It's a must. Like, you can't just really just coast by by doing your own thing. Like, you need to, like, reach out and collaborate with other people so that you guys can make some damn money. And not only do you have to people please, you know, other artists and record execs so you can remain in good standing within the industry, you also have to people please your fans, too. Like I said, that goes back to social media. You know, you have to hop on social media and check with your fans you know let them know that you're alive you know showcase and play your like your new music for them say hi hello how are you like you have to constantly like feed your fans or they will turn on you and the most recent example of that is Cardi B Cardi B recently had her fans turn on her because she didn't appear at the Grammys you know Cardi B she had a lot of attitude about it I'm doing girl day shit today right and um and I'm chilling and everything and then I'm going to my Twitter and I see people on my Twitter my fans my own fucking fans talking shit like oh practically saying that i'm lazy and that i was giving hints that i was going to the grammys bitch how the fuck was i giving hints that i'm going to the grammys when i'm literally lasering and bleaching my pussy on my insta story like i literally posted earlier today that in my house in new york with my kids you could hear my kids in the background when did I ever gave hints that I was going to the fucking Grammys? And for you to call me lazy and shit because I'm not going to an award. Wh what? Why, why would I go to an award for? Do I have any new music? Why would I, I show up with one nomination? And I lost it anyway. So you wanted me to go to the Grammys, lose an award, and me just be there smile like. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Like, come on now, my nigga. Come on now. I don't like that shit because it's like you know it gets me annoyed when other people talk about me but when my own fucking fans talk shit about me that shit really piss the fuck out of me bro that shit really pissed me the fuck off you know sometimes i look at cardi b and i'm just like girl like you can put the phone down like you can like ignore all of that but I think Cardi B is the type of person that like lets stuff kind of like bubble up and bubble up like she bites her tongue and then BAM it's an outburst or uh, B she's probably just way too sensitive for the industry but some fans got on her for not appearing at the Grammys she went at them like really hard like super hard and she ended up deleting her whole entire social media altogether which honestly girl you need it because at this point in the game Cardi B's been famous for almost like six years now she still hasn't really like she, she still hasn't really been able to like filter herself the way she needs to and you know a lot of people tend to give her a pass but at the same time I don't fault her for being irritated because whether you like it or not she's one of the artists that does work hard and she does a lot and she probably gets no sleep either so these artists are going to have a, a bad attitude some days. They're not going to be happy all the time and that also leads me back to Doja Cat who went off on her fans the other time even though she retracted what she said, she she meant what she said. 
She meant what she said because homegirl is tired. Cardi B and Doja Cat are tired because they're the most sat after in the industry and everybody wants a piece of them. Everybody wants to collaborate with them. Their fans want to see them. And the minute they take a breather for themselves, it's like, F you, F you. Like, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. And I feel bad for them and other artists that have to go through the similar situations as them. And speaking about fans turning on you, let's talk about the word flop. When a song flops, when an album flops, it's easy for me to, and for the rest of you to get on camera and get on social media and talk about how an artist's song flopped or their album flopped. But, you know, I've sat with myself and I've realized that has to be absolutely soul crushing to go through. And let's keep it real. Some artists are just in this game for the fame and nothing else. But there are a slew of artists that are in it for the pure, raw artistry. Like, they love to showcase their art. And it has to be absolutely devastating to put your time, energy, and sleepless hours into a song or a project only for it to flop. Only for you to find out that you didn't have the support that you thought you had. Only for you to find out that, you know, the, a lot of the um, support that was behind you was just fake internet support. Or people were only like supporting you because they like the way that you look, but not actually what you produce. For example, Nirmani's recent song, Fair. Nirmani came out with that song, Fair, and we gotta keep it real, it, it didn't do well. It didn't do well, it didn't do anywhere near as good as Wild Side. And I love Wild Side, but I gotta keep it real with you guys. I'm a Normani fan, and I've only listened to Fair probably once. And, and that's just being all the way honest. I, I don't know why it's a good song, but it just was not... It, it was just not giving what it needed to give. But the sad thing is, that song was literally about her pouring her heart out about... I want to say a recent breakup or like, you know, things that she's been going through, like her mental health basically, like that's what it was about. So imagine you pouring all of your heart and soul into a song and then bam, nobody gives a damn. And there's a slew of other examples like Big Lotto's uh, recent album, you know, she has a hit song on the, um, on the radio, Big Energy. Love Big Energy, even though it is a sample of um, the Tom Tom Club song, which people mistake that it's just Mariah Carey song, but no, it's actually originally a Tom Tom Club. I think that's the name of it, but that's like that's the original song that she sampled. Um, the song's a hit. I listen to that song every day too. But however, her album came out, and then I didn't listen to it. I don't know why, I just didn't, and a lot of people didn't listen to it either. And then we have Megan Thee Stallion's recent music. Now, we know Megan writes her music, she may get help, but she does, for the most part, write her music. But the, the, the songs just aren't, they're not doing what they usually did in the beginning for her career. And my biggest example is Lauryn Hill. Now, you guys, we let Lauryn Hill survive off for the last 20 to 30 years off of one album. Yes, we did. We have definitely enabled Lauryn Hill. But that album was an amazing album. It was a great album. One of the best albums ever made in all of music. Not just R&B, but music. But Lauryn Hill never even attempted to put out a new album because I feel like her anxiety was always in her head about the fact that, like, damn, like, what if this new album does not match the level of quality of my first album, which was an astronomical hit? It. Triple Diamond, I think it is. It's like when it comes to music, it's like you're competing with yourself, your past selves, but you're also competing with your peers too, around you. It's a tough game in this music industry name. You know, when we critique these artists, it's easy for us to just really just go ham and go all the way in, but I think moving forward, I'm gonna be just like a little bit easier on them because making music is hard, especially with all the other BS they have to go through behind the scenes. It's, y'all, the music industry is a beast. It is just a complete beast and you don't really understand what these people go through until you're actually in their shoes and I commend each and every artist for really getting up off their ass and giving everything an honest try. So moving forward, I'm going to be just a smidge a little bit easier on these music artists. Hopefully. And lastly, I want to talk about the biggest prize in music, which is the Grammys. I call it the Shammies. Now, you guys, I understand why a lot of artists want a Grammy because, you know, that has been made to be like the highest form of achievement within the music industry. Uh, besides getting platinum and diamond plaques, you also want a Grammy to solidify you in this game. The Recording Academy. The ones looking down on you and trying to lift you up and elevate you by giving you an award. But I call it the shammies, you guys, because <laughs> for majority of the years, 
I felt like whenever we would like see a category and it was like dead set, we knew who was going to win. They always go out of left field and just give you guys a twist. Y'all want a twist? Oh, y'all wanted a twist, eh? They give you guys a twist by awarding the award to some random ass person that nobody listens to or has ever even heard of. Like for example, I'll never forget that year when Beyonce was up for album of the year and they gave the award to Beck. Beck. And I gotta keep it real, like, I knew who Beck was, but I completely forgot about him. Beck, I think, was big, like, back in the 90s or the 80s, and I was just like, Beck? Like, what music did Beck come out with? And that also brings me to this recent year's Grammy Awards when, you know, for Reggae Album of the Year, we thought for sure it was going to go to this artist by the name of Spice. If you guys don't know who Spice is, she is probably one of the biggest reggae artists in the um, in the industry today because, you know, Jamaican music is kind of taking like a back burner to um, Afro beats, in my opinion. But Spice was one of the few people that were keeping that genre alive. And instead of her winning... They gave that whole entire nomination to Jaw, Soldiers of Jaw Army, which is a predominantly white reggae band. And I was just like, who? First of all, I gotta give it up to Spice. Spice, if you guys don't know, also she was from Love and Hip Hop. You know, besides Cardi B, she was one of the only few people to really like spin off from Love and Hip Hop and have a successful career in the music industry. So kudos to her. She has been busting her ass ever since she has stepped on the scene and it has paid off. You know, it's beautiful that she got nominated, but she should have won. She should have won. She was probably like the only visible person, Jamaican person, keeping reggae music alive, especially in the United States, where we barely even care anymore. And you give that to Soldiers of Jaw Army? Don't nobody know who that is? Like, like that's the thing with the Grammys and also the Oscars. Like, they just pick these people out of left field and give them the awards to kind of give you, like, a slap in the face. Or with the sheer fact that, like, oh, we can't give too many black people these awards. Oh, no, we only get a, a few. We only give you, like, three people, three black people awards, and that's about it. It's like they have a quota for how many black people can be given awards for one night. But, you know, it is what it is. Now, it's easy for me to say this because I'm not in the music industry, but that's why I don't really care much about the Grammys. Like, I care about, like, the BET Awards, if anything. That's really the only award show I would actually sit through and watch from start to finish. I don't know, that's just me, but I understand why a lot of these artists want a Grammy so bad, but at the same time, like, go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. If you guys know that you're getting an award at the BET Awards or the NAACP Awards, show up. Show up and get the award and be happy. But, you know, that also goes back to people pleasing and networking, but, you know, I'm just saying, giving you guys advice. Go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. The Grammy only tolerates us. They don't really want to award us. But yeah, y'all, this video is getting a little long. I kind of want to do a part two to this video and talk to you guys about, you know, why do these artists, especially these male rappers, keep going to jail or keep getting killed off? It's like these music industry execs are like legit hiring criminals now. Criminals with talent. Talented individuals, yes. But criminals and gang members and drug dealers. They're hiring them up and then they get on and then they put out music for these artists and then they end up going to jail or getting killed and the music execs, the record execs are still eating off of these artists. But it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think about the mental health that these um, artists have to like have in order to navigate throughout this whole entire music industry. And also let me know what you guys think about the hurdles they have to go through in order to showcase their artistry to you. But those are my views. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to come back at you guys with some more content. <laughs>